All right, everybody, welcome back. Exactly 21. This is day nine of it. We were looking at scientific notation. As a reminder, we had said if it's got a positive exponent, it means move the decimal right that many times. So one, two, and I'm gonna need five more zeros to get to seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'll backfill commas in. This is 35,400,000. And if we had to go on the other one, a negative exponent, it means moving it left that many times. So I need five zeros to the left here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a negative six, that's a plus seven. And so we get 0 0.0000178 after the decimal's moved. If we want to go into scientific notation from outside of it, we kind of do the opposite. Let's say we have 526,000. And so we want to go into scientific notation. We count how many times we had to move it. And if the number is bigger than zero, you're gonna have a positive exponent. I'm sorry, bigger than one, I mean. So that was five steps. Your numbers starts off as greater than one. And if your number starts off as less than one, like 0 0.000416. You're aiming to just get us, you want, you're aiming for a single digit in front of the decimal place. So I want this digit in front of the decimal place. I'm gonna move it right four times here. So 4.16. And this was a number less than zero, so it's gonna be negative. Let me give you a few to try going both directions. Uh, so I'll say right in scientific notation. And I'll maybe say expand out of sci-fi or scientific notation.
Get those again. All right, so what should the first one be? <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, did anyone else get 10 to the 8? We got 3 here, 6, 7, 8. That looks right to me. About this one. Time to the Anyone else get that? See some heads nodding. There's three. There's two more. It looks like that's right to me. What does this one expand to? How many zeros are in front of the eight? Three. Those are the four digits we moved. And this one, what is that big as that number? Five zeros zero after. Two hundred seventeen million three hundred thousand. Let's see. Two eight. That looks right to me. All right, uh, let's look at doing some operations in this. Let's say we had two times 10 to the fourth power and we're gonna multiply it by uh, nine times 10 squared. And in this notation, that x is a, a multiply. These are multiplication symbols. So what we really have is 2 times 10 to the 4th times 9 times 10 squared.
So parentheses like keep it separate, or when you are when you write it like that, which will that to write? This is when the parentheses are touching it means you're multiplying. So that's a multiply in between as well. Oh, what I meant is like, so on the left side is when you have two parentheses, you do put some in parentheses first and then you multiply, right? And because you the way you wrote it on the right is um no, do we do it left to right? So with this, it's all being multiplied. The parentheses are not actually doing anything. We don't need to be right. Maybe, maybe I'll do this. How about that? Oh. All right, now we're about that. I realize the confusion. Yeah. I mean, you can, but I think it's easier to do what we're about to do. Okay. So what we can do is we can do the two times nine together first. Two times nine make 18. The question is what happens with the 10 to the fourth and 10 squared? 10 to the fourth power is 10,000. And 10 squared is 100. And we're multiplying these. And someone throw that in a calculator real quick. Tell me how many zeros you get. Yeah, 10,000 times 100. Six zeros. Six zeros. Do you think that's coincidence? Can we get that six from somewhere else? From the exponents. This is 10 to the sixth power, and that is four plus two. So when you have something like 10 to the n power times 10 to the n power, any exponent, any base, uh, you add the exponents. So we have times 10 to the sixth there. So I have 18 times 10 to the sixth. That is not in scientific notation anymore. Because we have two digits now. It's a double digit number with no decimal place in it. Like the decimal place is here. So to get it to a decimal place, we need to move it one to the left. And if you're unsure what that does to the exponent, write it out real quick. That's 18 times 1 million is 18 million. So if I were to do it, it should bump it up. This is actually going to be 1.8 times 10 to the 7. Does that make sense? What part doesn't make sense? Uh, the decimal. So I think you get 10 to the 7. So if I rewrite the 18 times 10 to the 6 like that, count the decimals to actually put it back into scientific notation. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Does that work for you by that? Uh, so in the decimal, is that like half to do or is that just a For it to be in scientific notation, it has to be single digit in front of it. That's not going to happen in this class, but to be able to do like this is like the math page 21 is for it's so, to support it. But I got it if I'm going to teach you a topic, I'm going to teach you at least how to do it right. If you see, if you ever do it, take a science class or something like that, they're going to expect you to end in something like that. There's a lot of really, really small fucking numbers in science. Atoms are super small, as we saw the dust particle, an atom is even smaller than a dust particle. So a lot of the numbers in science have scientific notation. I'll expect you to end with a single digit.
Okay. Uh, but in general, where you're going to see this in this class, it is going to show up on your fucking calculator, and you need to be able to know what the hell it means in general. And usually when it shows up on your calculator, it's almost exclusively going to show up as negative. I unless you multiply by a really large number of something for no reason. Uh, probabilities are all less than one. And that's really the only time you really need to calculate in this class because that much can do all your math work for you. Uh, and numbers less than one have negative exponents in scientific notation. Uh, let me give you guys one more track. Uh, 3 times 10 to the 5th, and we're going to multiply that by 4.1 times 10 to the 7th. All right. So the three times the four should give you 12.3. 
And on that one, you can add the exponents and get 10 to the 12. And then we don't want to end with two digits in front. So just like happened with the 18 going on at 1.8, when we take a big number and make it smaller, we add to the exponent. This should be 1.23 times 10 to the 13. Oh. Did everyone get that? So if you do division, like say uh, 3.14 times 10 to the seventh over uh, two times 10 to the third, You can do this part separately from this part. And just like when fractions multiplied, they added, or not sorry, when uh, exponents were, the two bases multiplied, they added. If the two bases are divided, it becomes subtraction. So this part is going to be 10 to the 7 minus 3, or 10 to the 4. And 3.14 divided by 2, I think that's 1.57. And I'll give you guys one to try. Rude. Wait, just throw your hands in the air. Yep, move.
Would you guys be at? What'd you get? Fifty. No. Yeah. So first off, what's the seven point five divided by one point five? That part's just five. So if we're gonna subtract the exponents, I'm betting you didn't subtract, you added. Or minus negative three. Minus a minus is a plus. That turns into four plus three. It's tricky. It's designed to be tricky. Make you think and remember. All right. There's not too much. That's all we need to do on that. Uh, the way set notation works, intersection and union of sets. So let's say set A has uh, David, Mark, Javen, Angie, and Aiden in it. Yeah, we'll spell Aiden like that. And set B has uh, Sean, Art, Josh, and Aiden. So when they ask about or bring up intersection of sets, it's what is in common between the sets. Or what elements are in both sets? All sets. If there's more than two, I'll just say all. The symbol they use for intersection is an upside down fat U. But what it's really asking in English terms is what is in A and B? And the only member of both sets is Aiden. And so the only other reason I'm bringing this up is we've seen we've seen probability E and F. You might see probability of E union or intersect F. These are the same thing.
And the other thing they talk about is union of sets. The union of sets includes elements in either set. And it is written like a normal U, but it also tends to be wide capital. And this really is a or B. What is an A or B? So what is an A union B or A or B is David, Mark, Javen, Angie, Aiden, Sean, Art, and Josh. Aiden's again in set B, but we already listed him from set A, so we don't need to list him again. Assuming it's the same Aiden and it is. I mean, what are the odds of having two Aiden's spelled that way? And where we might see this, we've talked about probability of E or F. You might see probability of E union F. But they mean the same thing. So where might we see this in our stuff? Does anyone need this up longer? Uh, what's the probability of getting queens or hearts? or probability of queen union part. And we had a formula for that that was pretty handy. Does anyone remember what E or F led turned into? Ignoring the thing on the right, the notation there, ignore that. Does anyone remember what the probability of queen or heart would look like? This was the general addition rule. You do, you add them up separately, and you subtract any overlaps between the group. And you might see that in another notation doing the intersect symbol there. How many queens are there in the deck? Oh, queens, four. There's four. There's four queens. There's four queens out of how many cards? 52. How many hearts are there in a deck? So. 
key parts. Yeah. Okay. How many of any suit in a day? One out of four. It is one out of four, but I was shooting for 13 out of 52. Oh, I was trying to... There's 13 cards in each suit. You got the easiest way to remember. Think of ace as one. So one through 10, that's 10. Jack, queen, king is three more. Your face card to add three. How many queens and parts are there? It's like together. No. A single card that has both queens and hearts on it. Just the one, just the single queen of hearts. So, four plus 13 minus one over 52 is 16 over 52. You know, last you shit like this on your homework, I know it does. And it changes that. Sometimes it asks two suits. Sometimes it asks a suit and a rank. This is called rank. That is a lopsided, crazy looking heart. Suit. Sometimes two ranks, sometimes two suits, sometimes rank and suit. Uh, they ask a bunch of questions. Uh, other stuff you'll need to know. It's been like fucking two minutes. What the fuck? I think there's not enough people in here for two minutes. So. But two minutes? Jesus Christ. Rude. Swing the fucking lamp on, I guess. Uh, inequalities. Inequalities are going to pop up a lot. A lot. So inequalities are things that are might have an equal, but sometimes don't. This is our less than or equal to. This is our greater than or equal to. thing without the line underneath it is strictly less than. And the one without the line underneath it opening to the left is greater than. And if all you remember is this, you should never fuck up which one is which. Treat this as a mouth. It's a mouth going after the bigger meal. Uh, you could go with vampire mouth, vampire or alligator, some shit like that. Pac-Man, Pac-Man's a good one. Play Pac-Man. And it always goes after the bigger meal. We will have, especially in the last half of the semester, we will be comparing two numbers frequently. You're going to be comparing your p-value and your alpha for all hypothesis tests. If you've got them sitting next to each other, Put the mouth going towards the one it is. And if you're not sure which saying, if that's the less than or greater than, say them both. 
is 0 0.04 less than 0 0.05 or is 0 0.04 greater than 0 0.05? And if it helps you, move the decimal on both of them the same amount until you get a number of you that look familiar. If I move the decimals right twice on both of them, this looks like four and five, and I think you can recognize which number is smaller. So is four greater than five? No, four is not greater than five. It's gotta be that one. I see students fuck up which one symbol is which all the time. And I just thought it blows my mind. Like, but I've never said to do it like this. Pick two numbers, compare them, and say, say it out loud. Like four is four greater than five. And you're like, no, four is not five greater than five. Uh, when we have an unknown thing going with the inequality, like an x, x less than equal or equal to 6, this can be, it can be 6, because the line on bottom is an equal portion. It can be 5, it can be 4, it can be 3. It could go all the way down to negative infinity. That's the symbol for infinity. And despite what Buzz Lightyear says, infinity has no beyond. It is the largest possible number. And it's an I it's a concept, not a real number. Concept or idea, not a number. If you try to put a number to it, I could always add one to it to be a number that's bigger, which means it wouldn't be the largest anymore. And if there's a negative one, it means it's the lowest possible number or most negative possible. And why don't we call that a wrap for this session? We get a little bit longer of a break between classes. Only got a few minutes and then I'll get it started midway on the next topic. We basically have to restart. We started again on Monday or Tuesday, and I don't think anybody wants that. Get stuff.